What's up, y'all? Okay, so I want to try to share our journey with y'all. You know, for the people who be asking me, like, how much time he got, what have you experienced so far, and what's it like being a prison wife? Well, let me start from when we was in the county. When we was in the county, we probably, man, we was on the phone all the fucking time. Like, they to the point to where our lawyer was like, what the fuck do y'all be talking about? <laughs> One thing with me and Tiz, though. That's my husband's name. His name is Tiz. My bad, I may work. <laughs> One thing, one thing with us, we not gonna go without talking to him. I don't care how long it goes, like if he being a whole sick or if something wrong with the phone, he gonna find some type of way to reach out to his wife. This boy is going to reach out to me through a text message. It could be through another person. It might be through a relative, anybody. My husband's going to reach out to me. I ain't never finna go without knowing what's going on with my husband. I know everything. So, before he even went to, you know, federal penitentiary, um, we was in the county, you know. He been in the county before, you know. We are from Illinois, just to let y'all know off jump. When he was in the county, like, we went... We was talking all the time, I'm tell you all the time. Video visits, set up. Like, we'd be on the phones until the motherfuckers get cut off. So when it was time for us to get sentenced, I was studying enough on this process. Like, what's gonna happen? To the point to where I'm telling him, I'm like, hey, look, this person gonna come talk to you. They gonna do a background check on your entire life. Everything from since you was a shorty, when you first got in trouble, all of that. That's how the feds work. So the feds go off of a point system. They gonna go by like your open cases, closed cases. They go off of all of that. That's how they determine where you gonna be placed and all that stuff and what your points is for, you know, your guideline range. Your guideline range is what they saying is gonna be basically how you gonna be sentenced. How the judge will determine how you gonna be sentenced. So we went through all of that. Uh, we were sentenced June 10th. 21 uh, let's see we got a 10 year bid they gave us 10 years i say us because shit, i'm doing this shit with him like when i tell you like i've been studying this stuff this is what i have been doing the whole time up until the point so when my husband actually did touch that fed hold over and when he touched that federal penitentiary i told him what the fuck to do i'm like hey look this what's going on you can't do this you can't say that you can't look i had him together now he's been in a penitentiary before but that was state so we this is first fed me and people be coming to us all the time they be like man y'all act like y'all been through this before and y'all only two almost two years down i'd be like yeah shit. this is just like this my husband like i can't just not pay attention to what's going on with him and i can't not be concerned about what's going on with his will being that's my husband like that is literally my best friend we like this and when i tell you it has been quite a journey so far it has been a journey um let's see when we first left the county we was on the phone one day he like baby they just told me to bunk and junk i said shit where you going you bunking the junk and shit but that mean you, you finna go to court? He say, no, bunk and junk mean I'm leaving. It's that time. So, when he left, it probably was two weeks, two weeks without hearing from him. Within that time, the BLP don't show you nothing. They not going to tell you nothing. They not going to show you nothing. Like, it got to the point to where I start calling the motherfucking marshals like, hey, I ain't heard from my husband. I need to know what's his destination, what's going on. They told me, hey, we can't tell you nothing. We don't care if you are his wife. We don't know who on the other end of this line. So then the man basically broke it down to me and he was like, it could be a security breach. As you know, crazy motherfuckers be trying to go bust their people out. I thought that shit was only in movies. No, they do this shit in real life. But 
other than that let's see um when he got to the holdover facility he was in mississippi he went to mississippi so he was a Tallahatchie. oh my god when i tell y'all when my husband was explaining this shit to me he was like it is so fucking dirty in here they nasty like this place is terrible i don't feel safe in this environment when I contacted the warden and I told the warden this shit. Like, I, I did not tell these people. When I tell you, I did not tell these people my motherfucking name or nothing about my husband. Do you know they instantly moved him? He ended up going to the hole probably for like a week and a half. But they instantly moved him to a different side. So when he got to that side, he like, shit, oh, it's cool in this motherfucker. So he ended up liking it. However, what I didn't like about him being in there is he was adapting to it. You know, I got a problem with that. Like, nigga, you been around all these motherfucking niggas. You barely know these niggas. And they getting you in trouble? No, we gonna cut that shit short right there. So, like, I was giving him all to manage. We was arguing like a motherfucker when he was in Tallahatchie. Like, but it was never to the point to where before we hang that phone up, I'm not saying I love you or he telling me he loved me. That ain't, that ain't what we do because if you know, you know. When you in them federal penitentiaries, man, and USPs at that, those are high maximum securities. They doing all types of shit in there. They fight, they do gang riots, all that shit. But you got to understand, motherfuckers is not fighting. They don't get no fuck how big you is if you scared of them or if they scared of you or not. Because they stabbing you up in there. I'm going to just be straight bluntly with it and come out and just tell you. Like, you will get stabbed the fuck up in there. To the point to where the BLP covers this shit up. They didn't cover up so many deaths. If you look it up, you're not going to find it. That's another thing. When it comes to that government, man, they something else. But hey, this is just, this is what it's like in her. Um, pretty much in Tallahatchie, he was there for a couple months. Like, cause in October, he ended up going to his home facility. He ended up going to his home facility in Kentucky. And we still here, actually. We've been here... Shit, we've been here since October, so it's almost about to be a year. It's going on about a year, to be honest with you. Um, the problem when he got to Kentucky, like, he was writing me letters. I get his letters. He could ask, like, how far is Kentucky from home? Like, I wrote him back and told him. But see, the letters will come so slow. That's why they call it the snail mail way. But when I was getting them, I was sending them bitches back fast. Like, boom, 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 just responding, sending them back. But, you know, they like to fake the mail and shit, too. So, he was getting my letters late. And then it got to the point to where before... It took me so long just to get his fucking money from the county to him and the BOP. When I tell y'all, I was on that motherfucking ass like, hey, y'all need to release my husband money. He ain't got no money. He need food. He need all this stuff. So we went through that process to the trust fund. And he ended up getting his stuff to the point to work. At first, I'm in there fucking cash up and motherfucker, like buying him food. Like, hey, he got to have this. He got to have that to when his money finally did hit him oh, he was good <laughs> i didn't hear no complaint from this boy but when we was in Tallahatchie, it's smooth and makes you know and makes got that joint on how they got that joint if you know you know if you don't you don't um let's see uh so we was down in Tallahatchie for a little bit but when we got to mcquery though like i said before mcquery we experienced one little rowdy thing so i know if i talk to my husband every day and he calls me and he tells me hey if you don't hear from me tomorrow something going on you need to call up here and find out so when i didn't hear from him when he called me and told me that about two days i get a call from this lady she say hey they in there doing to your husband so she was like, hey, they ain't doing to your brother what they did to my son. I'm like, my brother? No, this is Mrs. White. That's my husband. So she was like, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. White. And she was like, um, well, they're beating on your husband. But I tell y'all, <laughs> that process right there, I instantly called the prison and I'm like, hey, 
why haven't I heard from my husband? Like, something's wrong. I need a wellness call check. Like, y'all need to be letting me know. The prison was not trying to talk to me. They was not trying to give me no type of information on what was going on or nothing. So when I tell you I harass them, when I tell you I harass them every single day, on the hour, on the second, on the minute, every shift change, to the point to where they steady want to keep playing with me. So I called up there every day, right? So then they was like, well, you could talk to this person. So I spoke to the SIS investigator of the shoot. They act like they didn't want me to speak to that person at first. Wait, now nah, pause, let me go back. Before I even got to the SIS investigator of the shoot, um, I was speaking to one of the guards. The guards told me, I can't talk to nobody but him. Um, the warden ain't gonna speak to me. So then I was told I need to go through chain of commandment. So I followed those steps went through chain of commandment. I asked for the chief, the captain, and the warden. So when they wasn't trying to let me speak to them, Shit, I'm gonna go over their head. So I start going over their head to the regional office that is over that prison. So I start calling them. I'm emailing them. I'm like, hey, I ain't heard from my husband something up. I got back to harassing that motherfucking jail to the point to where they were so shit. They told me, hey, look, you need to quit calling. Like I told them, I ain't finna quit calling shit. And so I know what the fuck going on with my husband. So then they let me speak to the chaplain. I had asked for him. He get on the phone, he talking about me. Well, he's okay. I spoke with him, but not before all that. He was like, um, I'll go by there and I'll try to check. So he kept stalling every time I called up there. I called the next day. It probably was like a Saturday when I called. So he was like, I went by there and I talked to your husband. He's saying he's okay. I'm like, man, I don't want to hear this shit. You said that he can write. You you talking about has he wrote me a letter saying has he be, that he getting transferred. I said, what the fuck is he getting transferred for? What the fuck is going on? When I tell y'all they fucked up so bad in that prison, they were doing some shit they should not have done. They had beat on my husband to the point to where my husband, like he wasn't writing me. They black boxed him. Now, if you know, you know. <laughs> what the fucking black box is what they put on tears. Man, he is not a menace to society, and they were in the wrong. Anytime you know when they in the wrong, they gonna try to get you the fuck up out that prison. They don't want you on their grounds. They want you gone. So they gonna diesel fuel your ass and ship you and keep shipping you. They make it hard for you to file grievances. That's why you gotta know about this shit. Like you gotta study this shit, read up on this shit, and you gotta know what to do. So it got to the point where I start threatening with a lawyer. Shit, I had this lawyer from down there. From them parts, I had this lawyer calling up there, and I'm like, hey, you need to subpoena the videos, do whatever you need to do, because something is wrong. That lawyer told me, he said, you definitely have a lawsuit, but you really don't need me, Mrs. White, because you know a lot. So when he told me that, I started reaching out to the sources. Like, I got in contact with FAM to the point to where I then became a member of FAM. <laughs> I didn't contact the ACLU, like, hey, we finna get this, like, like I told them, unless y'all want over a thousand some blacks outside of this prison protesting, do not play with me. I contacted the news media, but I did not give him the story for the simple fact because this man was not concerned about protecting the inmates. Now, I'm all about inmate lives matter. Like, if you're not going to protect these inmates, hell no, you can't get no story up out of me. I'm not giving you no information you want, what you're looking for, none of that. So when he was basically saying he wasn't going to do that, I stopped talking to him. Excuse me, scratching my neck. My neck was irritating, but I had stopped talking to him. So he didn't get the story. So I called up there, steady harassing them to the point to where they finally let my husband call on me. Do you know when I heard from this nigga after almost two fucking months in a shoe, it brought tears to my eyes because I'm like, God, God is God, man. God was protecting him all the time. So eventually I ended up getting his letter that he wrote me and he was telling me the shit that he was doing and what went on. That letter, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, that letter should have never made it out of the facility. But he did, and I was thankful for that to the point that I gave the lawyer a copy. Like, we still finna go through this process. Like, I'm not gonna let this lawsuit go. So, we we still finna go through this. But, you know, when you do things like that to the BLP, that's you versus the United States. 
that's the government you gotta always watch out because it's hard to go up against them <laughs> they always win and they do shit they know they're not supposed to do and if they can get away with it they will that's why you have to be your loved one's voice you have to be their protector you got to make sure that their well-being is okay they ain't the minute is not being violated that's where you come in at and when you do that shit they fear you it got to the point to where me and my husband sent the jail up i had random people calling me saying what do i do how do i do this um i haven't heard from my husband i ain't heard from my boyfriend fiance love him. like i just had so many calls coming through to the point to where i'm like hey okay this is what i did this what you gonna do right here keep calling that motherfucker don't stop and stay on top of business and you tell these people like hey because i'm gonna just keep it straight up honest with you that shit is like modern day slavery when you a rapper none of that shit mean nothing because you got money that shit don't mean nothing they ain't actually need people terrible and prison is segregated just to let you know somebody on a tv a chair or something it ain't it's not like you can go in there and just do what you want to do they got their own world and in their world shit's ran totally different than how our world is ran out here <laughs> So we've been at we've been at, um we've been down in Kentucky for a minute now. Like I said, we almost two years down. That's the only bad problem that we have encountered. Um, like I tell my husband, like if you can avoid an altercation, you make sure you do that at all given times because what we don't need is for you to be getting in a stupid fight and you lose your life in there. That's what we don't because what's the point of it you know you got men in them usps that we have that are lifers they lwlp some of them are never coming home but let me not just say that because anybody with an lwlp sentence that shit can be overturned the laws change every year and that's something that we do got to pay attention to and watch out for uh let's see it's, it's a lot of ways and now you can make some money man <laughs> when i tell you my husband be sending that bag home plenty of ways shit could be made shit could be done you know the first rules when you step on them usp shit that's any prison to be honest with you that's either in state or fed they want to see your paperwork if you are a snitch or a chomo you you can be in that fuzzy prison like you gotta go they gonna run you up straight up rats are never tolerated y'all gonna have to go to a job out of yard straight up like if you know you snitched and you going to prison, bro, they finna ask for your paperwork soon as you hit there. Somebody gonna come to you from that car, wherever you from, and they gonna be like, hey, you need to get this paperwork. I need to see what's up with you. Like, mm -hmm. who is you? Shit like that. Um, let's see. Um, so, as far as with the commissary, I put literally probably... $300 on my husband books every two weeks. When I tell you this lifestyle is not for the cheap, if you ain't got no job or no money, you need to get one or do something because your loved one is going to need money. Like, my husband is a big dude. Like, this man is not little and he loves to eat. He always writes me a letter telling me I'm hungry. <laughs> and I tell him to, like, keep your commissary stacked up, keep all your, you know, your um, condiments, commissary, um, your toiletries, all that stuff, because you never know. Because the facility he had in Kentucky, this motherfucker stay on lockdown. Like, dude, it's never probably a week we ain't going where this motherfucker ain't locked down. And they still ain't open businesses up yet. They keep going from operational level green to yellow. We going back and forth with this shit. They can't use the excuse for COVID no more because that shit, they said that shit was down. But see, I'm in a hospital and I'm working here, so it is increasing. Don't let them tell you that. So now they're trying to say they was going to open back up this month. I'm still waiting. I turned my paperwork in and stuff. Um, they're trying to say it's because of all the incidents that be occurring inside the facility. They can't use that as no excuse neither, to be honest with you, because they opened everything back up. Like the child hall, they can go back to that. They can go back to the gym, rig. Like they can do all of that stuff now. 
They opened that back up on the 13th at that facility. Uh, let's see. Hubs calls me literally all the fucking time in the feds. When I tell you this boy will call me every day, he's going to call me every day. He's not finna miss no beat on talking to his wife. And I love that because this man literally makes my day. Uh, let's see. What I do in my spare time, uh, let me tell you, we got 12 kids all together. So I've got seven of my own. Two are with my husband. Um, and then I've got three boys. That he's got by another girl and then he's also got two girls so i don't see the girls but i get the boys i have the boys all the time so all them kids that's enough to keep me busy during this journey I ain't gonna lie to you um uh, let's see i stay on the clock i be at work all the time i be doing doubles to the point where hey this is what keeps me busy and he has a business and i run his business so that's another plus to you know extra money money always heals but the lifestyle of being a prison wife it is not an easy journey this shit is hard you've got the emotional train wreck of emotions man like he will always accuse me like who you've been talking to who been trying to talk to my beautiful wife and i like i literally have to reassure this man i do not put myself in no situation to disrespect my marriage or my husband or myself me as a mother i'm a mother before anything i'm a wonderful wife and my marriage is the most important thing to me apart along with my children so i'd be reassuring him with that shit. um let's see what else Oh, uh, he finally took some pictures for me, y'all. He's sitting them. I'm going to make sure I show y'all the pictures when I get them in my box. I'm weird. I have told this man to send me his clothes with his scent on there. Like, you got to wear it so I can have your scent so I can wear it and sleep good. That's just me. I'm clingy. But my husband not that funny. Hey. <laughs> um, let's see. What else? Ooh, man, them USPs and lockdowns be a motherfucker. Like, they can be all lockdown for weeks. They can do months. Shit. Hopefully, they don't do a year. I don't know if they could do that or not, but how to survive a lockdown, just keep doing what you do when you're outside. I don't know, like, go to work, take care of your kids, pick up a hobby, run a business, stay focused. But the most important thing that has helped us along our journey, and I told you we are almost two years down come October 31st, Halloween, yes. The most important thing that has helped us is keeping God first and praying. I pray over him every day. I pray over him every night. There is not one time where I am not praying over my husband or concerned about him. But the lockdown calls after the lockdown is lifted, oh my God, it's like the best feeling ever. I cannot explain or express this to you enough. It is like a big fucking relief. I'd be so happy to hear this man's voice to the point where I'm like, oh my God, that's my sexy chocolate right there. So yes, um, I get judged for being a prison wife. I do. Shit, you got motherfuckers out here that be like, Oh, she out here fucking lotty dotty and everybody. But when I tell you, my husband has been incarcerated for almost two years. I ain't had sex in almost two years. I'm still a bit. Not a lot of people can do that because you do got some females out here that's fucking off on that man. Okay, when I was in a group, she. What are the girls gonna say in this group? She loved her man in prison, but she pregnant by somebody else. Like, what? That ain't my business, but make that shit make sense. Bitch, you're not loyal. Just say that. Okay. But, um, other than that, shit, we trucking this journey along. Like, so far, almost two years. And the time has flew. It has been almost two years since I have hugged and kissed my husband or seen my husband face to face. So, when I tell you that this journey is not for the week, baby, it is not for the week. Like I say stay focused stay prayed up keep god first and you got this if y'all got any more questions then let me know